Hey, welcome to Draft Academy. My name is Mike. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you guys how to build a four function calculator in PHP. Now, if you've been following along with this course, you'll know that in the beginning of the course, we actually created a very basic calculator. And the calculator basically just allowed the user to enter in two numbers. We took those numbers and then we added them together and printed the answer out onto the screen. In this tutorial though, I'm gonna show you guys how we can build a fully functional calculator, which can do not only addition, but subtraction, multiplication, and division. And we're gonna allow the user to decide which operation they wanna perform. So this is gonna be pretty cool. And we'll get to use um, if statements in order to do this. So down here inside of this program, I have this form that I set up in my HTML. And the action is just site.php, that's this file and then the method is post, and then I have this submit button. So the first thing that I'm gonna to wanna to do if I'm gonna build this calculator is I'm gonna to wanna to be able to get information from the user. And actually for this particular calculator, we're looking for three pieces of information. We're looking for the first number, we're looking for the second number, and we're also looking for the operation that they wanna perform. So not only do I wanna know what two numbers they wanna use, but I also wanna know if they wanna add, subtract, multiply, or divide. So we're gonna create input boxes for all of those different things. So I'm just gonna say input type is gonna be equal to number. So we're gonna use this to get the first number and then I'm gonna give this a name and I'm just gonna set it equal to num1. And then I'm just gonna put a break over here. So this is gonna allow us to get num1 and I'll basically just say first num. And then what I'm basically just gonna do is copy this and we can use this same template to get the second number. So over here, I'll just make a new line and we'll paste this down here for the second number. So now we're able to get the first number and we're able to get the second number. I'm gonna change this to num2. And the last thing we wanna do is we want to get the operator. So I'm just gonna say OP and that's gonna stand for operator. And I'm actually gonna create another input and I'm just gonna say type and we're gonna set this one equal to text box. So we're gonna allow the user to type in like a plus sign, a minus sign, a multiplication sign, or a division sign. And then over here, I'm just gonna say name, and we're just gonna say this is gonna be OP, once again for operator, and then we'll put a break over here. So I have three input boxes, the first num, second num, and the operator. These two are getting a number, and this one over here is just getting text. And actually this should just be text, not text box, my bad. So now we're able to get information from the user. And if you see over here on my webpage, that should all work out. So we have you know boxes for each of these different inputs, and then we have our submit button. So our job now is to get that information. Um, I'm actually gonna store it inside of different variables, and then we need to figure out what operation they wanted us to perform. So down here, let's just create a few different variables. So I'm gonna create a variable um, we'll just call it num1, and I'm gonna set this equal to whatever the user entered. So it's gonna be post, and we're gonna get the number from the num1 um, number box, and then I'm gonna do the same thing for num2. So I'll say num2 is gonna be equal to post and num2. And then finally, I'm gonna do the same thing for the operator. So I'm just gonna say op, which is gonna stand for operator, is gonna be equal to post, and here we're just gonna get OP. So these two are gonna be numbers, and this one is gonna be a string of text. So what we wanna do now is we wanna figure out what operation the user wanted to perform. In other words, we have these two numbers, right? And it doesn't really matter what those are, but we also have this operator. And in order to figure out if we need to add the numbers, subtract them, multiply them, etc we need to figure out what's inside of there. In other words, we need to figure out if it's a plus sign or if it's a minus sign. And in order to do that, we can use an if statement. So by using an if statement, we'll allow our program to respond to this value. So down here, I can just say if, I'll make an open and close parentheses, open and close curly bracket. And the first thing I wanna do is check to see if this is a plus sign. So I can basically just say if op is equal to a plus sign. And if the operator is equal to a plus sign, then we can basically just echo out num1 plus num2. So if it's a plus sign, then we'll just write out the answer. So it's gonna be num1 plus num2. And then we can keep checking different things. So if that's not the case, then I can say else if, and I'll come down here and I'll check to see if the operator is equal to 
a minus sign. If the operator is equal to a minus sign, then we can just echo out num1 minus num2. Because if this condition over here is true, that means we want to subtract the numbers. And I can actually do the same thing for division and multiplication. I'm going to copy this and I'm going to paste it down here because we're basically doing the same thing. And I'm just going to say division sign. So I'm going to do that forward slash and I'm going to make a forward slash here. And then I'll paste this one more time for multiplication. So here it's going to be an asterisk. And then down here we will multiply them. So this if statement is basically checking if it's a plus sign. If it's not, it's checking if it's a minus sign. Then it's checking if it's a division sign or a multiplication sign. But there's also one more situation that could occur. And that's when the user entered in an invalid operator. So they didn't enter in one of these four up here. So we can just say else. And then down here, I can just echo out an error message. So I could just echo out like invalid operator, right? So that'll cover the case where the user entered in an invalid operator. So basically this if statement is going to allow me to figure out what's inside of the operator variable. In other words, it'll allow me to figure out what the user entered as an operator. And depending on what they entered, I can perform that operation down here. So this should be fully functional. Why don't we refresh the page and we'll go ahead and run this program. So you can see down here, it's saying invalid operator. That's basically just because I haven't entered anything yet. So if I come up here, I can say first num. Why don't we say this is going to be 10. And why don't we do addition? And then the second number is going to be like 35. So now when I click submit, it should add those numbers together. So it's going to look through that if statement, figure out which operator we submitted, and it's going to do the operation for us. When I click submit, you see we get 35. So why don't we do 30 and we'll multiply 30 by two. So now we should get 60 and you can see down here that we do. So that's actually working pretty well. Let's do one more. So I'm going to say like 45 and let's make the operator like some nonsense like draft and then we'll just say 35, 35. So this is actually going to be an invalid operator. So our program will recognize that and it will show us. So down here, we were able to use this if statement in order to figure out what the operator was that the user entered. And that is actually pretty awesome. So hopefully you can see how that works and you can kind of see like, you know, how something like this could be useful. And I also want to show you guys um, one more thing. And this isn't like directly related to this calculator, but it's a little thing that I think some people might be confused about. So actually, if I came over here into my calculator program and I entered in like a decimal number, so if I entered in something like 4.6 and I click submit, you'll see that we're actually getting this error here and it says, please enter a valid value. Um, and actually, let me do it again. So we get that um, the nearest values are four and five. So it didn't actually let me um, put in here a decimal number. And that's actually has to do with um, how HTML works. And it basically just has to do with how this input tag works over here. So by default, when we say number, this is only going to take like whole numbers. Um, but we can actually modify that so we could make it so we could use decimal numbers. So I could just say over here, step, and I could set this equal to like 0 0.1, for example. And now this is going to specify that we can take numbers um, to this decimal point. So we could basically say numbers to the tens place. So over here, now I should be able to enter in a 4.6 um, with no problem. So I could say like 4.6 plus um, 5.0 and it'll be able to do that math for us. But you'll notice if I tried to do like 4.567, this is going to throw an error again because the step is not that significant. So if I said step is 0 0.001, now I'm going to be able to enter in a number just like this. So I could say like 4.567 plus and I could do like nine and now it'll be able to add these numbers together. So that's not necessarily like a PHP limitation. That's more of an HTML limitation. Um, but if you were a little bit confused about that, hopefully um, that clears it up a little bit. But you know, the main point of this tutorial was to kind of show you guys how we could use an if statement to figure out what a user inputted into our program. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe to Draft Academy to be the first to know when we release new content. Also, we're always looking to improve. So if you have any constructive criticism or questions or anything, leave a comment below. Finally, if you're enjoying Draft Academy and you want to help us grow, head over to draftacademy.com forward slash contribute and invest in our future.